Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Nightly Read Aloud with Dr. Ivy. Today is Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. It is Monday, May the 11th, 2020, and tonight marks our 41st Nightly Read Aloud during school closure. If you are just now joining in for our Nightly Read Alouds, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Trevor Ivy, and I am a proud educator in Sumter County, South Carolina, and like so many of my educator colleagues right here in my very own community across the state, the nation, and even the world are being asked to step up and out of their comfort zone to completely redesign teaching and learning experiences to keep our children meaningfully engaged during this challenging time when schools are closed and learning must continue. And to that end, I have dedicated myself to a nightly read aloud each school night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time to help redirect some sense of normalcy during this very challenging time. And tonight, we kick off our ninth week of these read alouds during school closure. And for tonight's read aloud to kick off week number nine, I thought to myself, what would be a, a great book to read during this very exact time in the school year in which uh, most of us are engaged in standardized testing? That's right, boys and girls. You heard Dr. Ivy say it's standardized testing, but don't worry. Uh, we are not taking standardized tests this year, so no SC Pass or SC Ready here in South Carolina. But I wanted to, to see if I could find a uh, funny read aloud uh, about the standardized testing process. And I think everyone, not just young boys and girls who have to uh, take the standardized test, but for uh, teachers, administrators, and support staff that uh, are in the schools doing the work each and every day. Uh, usually the first two weeks of, of every May in the school year is devoted to state standardized testing. Uh, and it's a way for uh, us to find out as educators uh, what all a child has learned over the course of the year in their given grade level uh, for uh, really diagnostic purposes. Um, but uh, right now, of course, we are not going to be taking those tests this year. And so for tonight's Read Aloud, I have selected the book Testing Miss Malarkey. Testing Miss Malarkey is authored by Judy Finchler, and the pictures are illustrated by Kevin O'Malley. So let's poke a little fun uh, around the commotion of state standardized testing, which usually takes place this exact time every school year. Testing Miss Malarkey. Miss Malarkey is a good teacher, and usually she is very nice. But a couple of weeks ago, she started acting just a little weird. She started talking about the test, the instructional performance through understanding test. I think Miss Malarkey said it was called the IPTU test. But Miss Malarkey said the test wasn't that important. She said that it wouldn't affect our report cards. It wouldn't mean extra homework. And if we didn't do well, we would still go on to the next grade level. But you see Miss Malarkey biting her fingernails. I think she's nervous. At recess, we played Multiplication Mambo. Each class got new CD-ROMs called There's Something About Decimals. And after lunch, we played Funny Phonics. Miss Malarkey said, you never know what's going to be on the test. The closer we got to the test day, the weirder things got. When I brought the attendance sheets to the front office, I heard Principal Wiggins yelling about pencils. This is the test. I want good number two pencils, the principal said. Not the kind with the crumbly erasers, and I will personally make sure they're all sharpened perfectly. The cafeteria lady, her name is Mrs. Slopdown, took away the potato chips and she served only fish, saying, fish is good brain food. Some of you should eat a whole fish. Meanwhile, a student could be heard saying, my food usually goes right to my stomach. Not today. 
In art class, we each made posters about the test. Mrs. Magenta also showed us how to color in all those little circles that they put on tests. During gym class, we didn't play baseball and we didn't even exercise. Mr. Fitnuff said we had to prepare our young minds and bodies for the test. We all learned something about meditating and about something called yogurt. Like I said, things were going pretty weird at my school. I got to thinking that the test was sort of important. Look at the gym teacher saying, your mind and body are one with the test. Even my mom knew about the test. When she read me my bedtime story that night, I had to complete a ditto and give the main idea before I could even go to sleep. Mom started to make me eat a really big breakfast. And for lunch, she packed me a Power Bar 2000. When I got to school, I traded Adam for a fat-free bran muffin. He traded with Hannah for a baggie of carrot sticks. Hannah didn't want the Power Bar, so she asked her best friend Meredith if she would trade for her apple. Somehow, someone must have wanted the apple, and I'm not sure what happened, but I had the Power Bar 2000 again. And then one night, my mom took me to a PTA meeting. You know, the Parent Teacher Association meeting. A man was there, and he was talking about the test. He wasn't a teacher, he wasn't a parent, he wasn't even the principal. But whoever he was, he seemed to think that the test was very important. And so did the parents. On the big day of the test, the janitor, Mr. Surly, closed off the whole hallway. You couldn't even walk down it unless you had a pass. And you had to whistle. Miss Malarkey had to whisper the secret password to Mr. Surly before she could go down to room 10. See the sign, testers only? That morning of the test, there were more teachers than kids waiting to see the school nurse. Miss Malarkey's job was to hand out the number two pencils and the scratch paper. She looked like she didn't get enough sleep the night before. Principal Wiggins was keeping the time. We couldn't even touch the test until he waved the flag. When it was time to start, he waved the flag so hard, something happened to his hair. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, do you see his hair flew off? The test took forever. It took two whole days. My friend Carmine got in trouble for not using his scratch paper the right way. I thought his ninja warrior looked pretty good though. Miss Malarkey caught Barry with his baseball cards at the school test. Morgan got a stomach ache and she had to go see the school nurse. The hall monitor gave her such a hard time that she threw up right in the hallway. When Miss Malarkey said to erase all of your pencil marks, Janet erased her whole test. And Principal Wiggins, you remember him? He was in the room for a while, but he had a stomach ache and had to go see the school nurse too. I hope he didn't throw up in the hall like the others did. After the test, everybody got prizes and treats and we got extra recess. Even Stephen, who fell asleep two times during the test. Miss Malarkey looked wiped out and she didn't even take the test. Look at uh, him saying to Miss Malarkey, here, you can have my Power Bar 2000. <laughs> It's been a long time since we took the test and things are kind of back to normal. 
Principal Wiggins isn't yelling quite as much. The cafeteria lady started serving potato chips again. Mom's packing me good old peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And Miss Malarkey is letting her fingernails grow really long. I guess the test really wasn't that important after all. And at the very end of the book, number one IPTU County Champions, the end. So what a great book, Testing Miss Malarkey. You know, this book is written from the perspective of the beginning of the school year versus the end of the school year. And so just like the end of the school year, boys and girls, you know that in the beginning of the school year, we also take standardized testing. And in this book, Miss Malarkey's class is no exception. You remember that teachers, students, and even parents are preparing for the test. And, and the test in this book was called the IPTU, the Instructional Performance Through Understanding Test. And, and you can conclude that the school is in an uproar. And even though the grown-ups in the book tell the children not to worry, they are all acting kind of strange. And has this ever happened to you before at school? Do you uh, see uh, teachers, the principal, uh, the other uh, workers in the building, even the janitor? They all kind of become a little bit more aware, right? A little bit more stressed during standardized testing time. In this book, even the gym teacher is teaching stress-reducing yoga instead of sports like all of the kids are used to in gym class. Even the parents in the book are joining in. They're giving pop quizzes to their children instead of bedtime stories each night. The cafeteria lady, she's serving brain food for lunch. And the kids are beginning to think in this book that maybe the test is more important than they're being led to believe. And so, yes, a lot of commotion at this time of year, usually in schools uh, across our country uh, when standardized testing is given. That usually signifies that the end of the year is upon us. And it's a way for boys and girls uh, to demonstrate uh, the knowledge that they have gained throughout the year. So boys and girls, even though we are not uh, taking any standardized tests this year, um, I hope that uh, you are still continuing to uh, practice those very important skills at home uh, because soon we will be back uh, to school. We'll be physically back at school uh, next year and uh, standardized testing isn't going away. And so you want to keep those skills sharp. Uh, so like the multiplication mambo at recess, the phonics game from the book, uh, you have these great resources that your teachers have provided you uh, through your Chromebooks and uh, through other websites that you could access. So I hope that you are taking advantage and that you are keeping your brain really, really super sharp. So again, what a funny uh, way to poke fun of standardized testing during this time of year. So before we say goodnight, before we go and wash our hands and brush our teeth and get ready for bed, let's take a moment to engage in our nightly reflection. So you know it, the four questions, starting with question number one, what was your most favorite part about today? Take a moment to share with your parent, your older sibling, younger sibling, fuzzy friend that may be beside you, or if you're by yourself, tell yourself, what was your most favorite thing about today? Question number two, what was your least favorite thing about today? Question number three, if you could go back and change one thing about today, what would you change? And last but not least, question number four, what is one thing that you hope is going to happen tomorrow? All right, boys and girls, that does it for our nightly read aloud. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the book. And even more, I hope that you are staying well and that you're taking care of yourself at home. Tune in tomorrow for our next nightly read aloud with Dr. Ivy. But remember, if no one has told you that they love you today, if no one has told you that they care about you today, 
Dr. Ivy is here to tell you that he loves you and cares about you so very much. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.